Okay. So alhamdulillah wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So forgive me for the brief exchange between Abu Dhabi, but you know, again, we all are Muslims and we all are the same. And yeah, with that said, I want to speak to you guys about Ramadan. This year's Ramadan, alhamdulillah, it depends. Obviously, we're speaking to people from different countries right now. Mashallah, we have some people in the UK, some people in the UAE, and if any other country, welcome. So the situations are different. But I want to first talk about those people who have, or they're living in an area where Ramadan will happen. If you're living in an area where Ramadan will happen, obviously there will be taraweeh, and you know, it is the usual. Well, you know, how would you run the usual Ramadan? Most Ramadan is the same. So we can talk about the usual Ramadan a bit later, maybe five minutes later. But for those who are not having a typical Ramadan, they're having last year's Ramadan, you know, no taraweeh. Let me give you some advice that can be shared with the other people. With regards to taraweeh, you know, don't forget to pray with your families. Why not? It's very good. You know, why not? Again, this is, brings to family together. It brings unity. It's beautiful. Another point, now, that's simply how it is for people who are by themselves. You make sure you do have the taraweeh. The rest of Ramadan is the same for everyone else. Nowadays, we are still in the coronavirus. And so even if you can go to taraweeh, everything is the same. You are still at home. You're not traveling. You're not going to school. You don't have uni. Or if you do have uni, it's online. And so, what is a typical, an ideal online, on-distance coronavirus Ramadan? Taraweeh is just one promise during the night. What about the other 16 hours that make up the day? With that said, firstly, make sure to read the Qur'an. My heart gets upset when I find some brothers do not read the Qur'an. But then you ask them, why not reading Qur'an, exams, this and that? I personally don't agree with that. Because why? Everyone who has exams will not practice Ramadan. No, there are people who finish the Qur'an maybe multiple times, but they you know, are fasting. So it's not an excuse. And they still have exams. So it's not an excuse. Also, you guys now are more available. Everything is from home. You guys are relaxed. So take advantage of that. Qur'an is a very beautiful thing, my brothers and sisters. The scholars mentioned Qur'an is the greatest way to gain good deeds. Every letter you get, 10 good deeds. And we know the famous hadith that the Prophet Muhammad said, Alif, Lam, Meem is not one letter. No, Alif is one letter, Lam is one letter, Meem is one letter. See, that is 30 good deeds. Can I remind you that when a Muslim says, Salaamu Alaikum, how many good deeds does he get? 10. And Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah 20. And Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh 30. So imagine this simple Alif, Lam, Meem is perhaps equal to Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. So if that's just for three letters, so there's three letters. If it's for three letters, then what about huh, the whole juz that you read on a daily basis? Having said that, I want to tell you guys a story in our modern times about the khatam. You know a khatam when you finish Qur'an cover to cover? The khatam of the Qur'an of the sin. But that happened before Ramadan. So a person came to know, I don't like telling stories, if I'll be honest with you, those who know me know that, but it's a true story. So it's an authentic story, what's the issue? It's no problem. But I know the person. The person, he found this out, that the best way to gain good deeds is Qur'an. And there's a hadith of Prophet Muhammad that whenever you do a bad deed, do a good deed so you can wipe it away. So every time he did a sin, he would read one juz of Qur'an. And that makes you, like, imagine 30 sins, that was his Qur'an. So imagine, I, I sound strange, but this guy who is committing sins, is he not better than you and I? Because you and I were relaxing, you know. And even if we're not sinning, we did zero Qur'an. And this guy, he's sinning, but he did one juz of Qur'an. One whole khatam of Qur'an, 30 ajza. So my point is that if that is the case of a sinner before Ramadan, what about someone who is not a major sinner? So focus on that. Second, I'll tell you something beautiful. I was just curious to know myself because in the coronavirus, I don't like to talk about myself. I, I would want to give introduction. Introduction is for special people. I am nobody. I am just a normal Muslim. That's it. I pray five times a day. I do one or two extra things. That's it. But yeah, I'm a normal human. I was free last year. I found the time to do two Jews a day. And I found the time to do three Jews a day. Yes. So imagine first you finish the Quran every 15 days, then finish the Quran every 10 days. And I have a teacher, I know him personally, a teacher of mine. 
he told me he finished the Quran one day and he told me the steps. I did this, 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 and this. And this is not strange. There are, okay, Uthman ibn Affan, it was narrated, he finished the whole Quran in one rak'ah. And this is authentic and this is narrated. Like Imam al Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, finished the, finishing the Quran twice a day. Or they would finish it once a day and then the last time they finished twice a day. This is known. This is known. You can do this. You understand? So take advantage. Read as much Quran as you can. I was thinking, I said, hmm, I want to calculate how many good deeds I'm getting. Okay, how many good deeds are in one juz? So I wanted to see how many letters are in the whole Quran. Okay, I got the big number. It's like a big number, maybe maybe a few million or something. No, I think it's hundreds of millions or billions. I said, hey, divided by 30. I said, okay, so each juz has 20,000 letters on average. That means 200,000 good deeds for each juz, right? Wrong. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that for every good deed you do, you get 10 times extra good deeds until 700. So imagine one juz, which would normally equal huh, 20,000 good deeds, minimum it is either 2 million until times 70. You probably have some good math people, Abid, you're studying finance. You can do the math. Imagine, you know, 200,000 up to 700 times. It's a big number. So do this, any good action. And then imagine, if the Muslim anyway, he gets times 10 to times 700. What about Laylatul Qadr and the last 10 nights where it is like a thousand months? And so imagine doing one Islamic action for a thousand months. Plus times between 10 to 700. What can you ask for? And then people want to doubt in Islam. How can you doubt in Islam? Is there a religion more kind than Islam? Christianity, they don't have this. You know, no, this is our Islam. Right. So that is one way to look at it. Now question, when is, huh? When is Laylatul Qadr? I want to tell you guys something. Last year, coronavirus, you guys know how it was. I am pleased that inshallah, I got Laylatul Qadr. Why? Because I know it was coronavirus. I had nothing to do. I worshipped Allah, inshallah ta'ala, maybe equally, probably every, all 10 nights. So I am guaranteed to have got Laylatul Qadr. But what about the guy he's like sleeping, uh, sleeping whole Ramadan, this 27th Ramadan, he is worshipping Allah. What if Laylatul Qadr is not 27th? Now, the question, when is Laylatul Qadr? And people bring one hadith, one says 27, maybe 129. One says any odd night, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29. Now, the answer is, it's the issue of a difference of opinion. And the scholars have difference of opinion because even the Rasulullah, he, he mentioned in a hadith, uh, okay, I believe in Sahih al-Bukhari, that the night was mentioned. But because there were some disagreements between some Muslims, uh, as a punishment, Allah took away that knowledge from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the main point is that we know as a fact. And by the way, people think it can only be odd nights. There's an opinion of some scholars that Laylatul Qadr can even be even nights. So even 20 can, ha can be it. 21 can be in it. 22 can be in it. 23, 24. So how do you make yourself relax? Do what any sane person will do. Worship Allah all 10 nights, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, equally and khalas. As we say in Arabic, Farak Tayyib, you're all good. So then you're guaranteed to have caught it. Or what if you only worship 27? Maybe you got it, maybe you didn't. But if you look in the ahadith, there actually are some signs where you can tell Laylatul Qadr. You, you can tell this day, the, the sun will be like this, this and that. But the point is that yeah, and one hadith may mention the sun will be like a specific way. Not everyone can see the sun where they live. Not every. So the point is that just you know make yourself relax and worship Allah all ten days, and you are good to go. Another point is please, you know, do not sleep the whole day. You can sleep, you know, the other months. You have eleven other months to sleep during the whole day. In Ramadan, try to stay awake the whole day. I understand it's maybe difficult. I understand it may be heavy upon you. Fine. But please, you do not have to sleep the whole day. And You know, so come on. When will you read Quran then? And how dare you say, I have no time to read Quran when, you, when you're sleeping for this many hours? Don't sleep. And somehow, some way, you'll find those hours to read Quran. You'll find those hours to read Quran. 
Jazakallahu khairan. So anyway, so please. You now obviously we will get tired. This is human nature. So take a nap at Zuhr time and you'll get it rewarded for it. Okay? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, take the afternoon nap after Zuhr. It's one hour, half an hour maybe. Why he commanding you, why the shaitan does not take a nap? Take a nap. This has many benefits. The napping helps you have energy to later on. The napping you know, maybe will replace your sleep from later on so you can stay awake at night. Take one hour nap. You want to have a nap? Take one hour nap. This is sunnah. May Allah reward you for this nap. Otherwise, for your usual naps, maybe Allah won't reward you. But this is you have edge, you have reward. So why not nap? But do that one hour for the Zuhr, that's, that's it. You understand? So please read a lot of Quran. Quran is so beautiful. Quran is such a beautiful thing. You know, Quran is so beautiful. This is the speech of Allah. And we please refocus. Quran, this is literally what Allah said word by word. This is Allah's speech. Quran is Kalamullah, speech of Allah. You know, and so read the translation as well. Read the tafsir. Read the translation. Understand what your Lord is saying. Understand. You know, sometimes when your heart is in the ibadah, you know, I'll tell you guys something honestly. Sometimes your heart is in the ibadah so much. As in Arabic, we say, you know, you want to fly out of happiness. That is how some people may feel when they are worshipping Allah with huh? yaqeen. They are worshipping Allah with fushu' with having concentration. You understand? SubhanAllah, one time I was feeling this feeling. It's like I wanted bad news to happen. I said, listen, I cannot focus anymore. I'm too happy. I'm so happy from this. I can't even focus. You know, I need to bring myself back down. So please focus on your ibadah. With the imam, you are praying. Some people who are praying taraweeh at home, they say, is it halal for me to read from the mushaf? It's halal for, you, for the imam to read from mushaf. As for people behind him, focus on what he is saying. There's, but the imam, yes, the imam can read from the mushaf. There is no problem. And this is proven in the narration of the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, the thing is that I also advise you guys, pray with the imam until he is done praying. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, if you pray with the imam until he is done praying, okay, you get the reward of praying the whole night. Now you have excuse to sleep. How about sleep? You have a reward of praying the whole night anyway. And if you can, please pray Isha and Fajr in the masjid. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever says praise Isha and Jum'ah, uh, Isha and Fajr in the masjid, he gets the reward of praying the whole night. Imagine you have double the times. Reward of praying the whole night for staying until the imam leaves and reward of praying the whole night for Fajr and Isha. So take advantage of all these actions. In Ramadan also, please, Ramadan is a beautiful time to leave the bad habits. What are bad habits? Smoking. You know, I saw a person when I was younger, during Ramadan, during Taraweeh, we were leaving. He was outside the masjid smoking. I was a young kid. I saw, I still remember this to this day. And one thinks, come on, at least in Ramadan, can you at least leave it? Leave it. And by the way, some people say, oh, smoking during fasting, Oh, can we do it? It is smoke, it's not food. If you ask a smoker, you see the smoke, I never smoke, so I wouldn't know, but this is when you read, you've learned these things. When you ask a smoker, the smoke tends to take this piece of food inside and it sort of feels full. I said that we should not smoke when we are fast. I mean, we shouldn't smoke anyway, it's haram. And I said, this is another thing I want to discuss today. Is smoking haram or makruh? If you guys ask your parents, your parents will say makruh. Why would your parents say makruh? If we go back to when smoking was founded, maybe even doctors did not know whether smoking was harmful. It was just like, okay, this is something that boys do. Okay, that's it. So scholars said makruh because they said, listen, it makes a bad smell. And just like how garlic, if you eat it, it's makruh, you know, you have bad smells, you disturb Muslims. Don't smoke, it has a bad smell. Back then it was makruh because even doctors didn't know. Then once the medical community said, this is harmful, this causes cancers, this was this and that and that and this, the scholars have mentioned it is haram. And I promise there's not a single scholar I know alive who mentions it is halal. So this is a you know doubt. And you guys can convey this knowledge to all those who ask. And even I like how it is. You know, it's simple. In some countries, what does it say? Smoking causes early death. So beautiful and simple. But who cares if it causes death or not? It is haram. That suffices us. I don't want to speak about this topic. And there are people from different genders, different ages who are watching this. So I'll keep this age appropriate. But... 
They're the people who watch haram videos and do the thing that accompanies haram videos. Leave that during Ramadan. Leave it. It's haram anyway. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it. Anyone who has a working brain will understand it. Leave those habits during Ramadan. 30 days. You know, scientists mention it takes 30 days to break a habit, uh, to make a habit. And 30 days may also take to break a habit. So break all of your bad habits. If you're a Muslim sister and you don't wear the hijab, we all know that not a single scholar will say that, you know, it's halal to not wear hijab. No, we know hijab is hard. Try wearing it in Ramadan. Try, you know, like, for example, is it fard to wear this? No, for boys, boys do not have to wear thobe or this or this or anything. But you see in Ramadan, boys when they go to Taraweeh, they'll wear this and maybe this too. And they start liking it. They feel a different person. They feel more Islamic and they want to continue. They made a habit. Also, you see, psychologically, you associate some things with certain feelings. For example, let's say I went to Iceland. And in Iceland, I was very cold. Example. So maybe whenever I, and I was so cold and my hair was going up. And let's say anytime I'm cold in that super cold, maybe I'll think of Iceland. Why? Because I associate cold with Iceland, for example. And the same thing you will associate your hijab or your thobe or your Islamic clothing with that nice Ramadan vibes, the Ramadan peace. And we all know that the Ramadan vibes are real and the Ramadan peace is something beautiful. And it comes in Ramadan. Finally, I want to tell you that do not think you will make it to Ramadan. We know Ramadan is near, but don't think you'll make it to Ramadan. Okay? Even I had a friend of mine, he passed away, his father passed away two Decembers ago, right before the coronavirus. His father could never meet the coronavirus Ramadan. I had a friend, you know, his father passed away a month ago. His father could never meet this Ramadan, right? I had, there's a school teacher recently we had. He passed away a month ago. He never met this Ramadan. And you guys know how many uncles or aunties who have died or friends, they never met this Ramadan. And so don't think you will meet Ramadan. Worship Allah now. Leave your sins now. In these three holy months, Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, the good deeds, inshallah ta'ala, are multiplied, but the bad deeds are also multiplied. Read Quran from now. Remember I told you at the beginning, our brother in Islam who was sinning when he finished the whole Quran, what about you and I who don't do major sins maybe, but we still don't finish the whole Quran. So do this and finally, if anyone calls you, oh, look at you, you are wearing hijab, Ramadan Muslim. You have a beard, Ramadan Muslim. You're only good at Ramadan. Don't care what they say. Don't care. Ramadan Muslim is better than a person who is, is not no Muslim. Yes or no? Secondly, don't let them disturb you. They are evil. They have a sickness in their heart. Let them keep their sickness. You be as good. Don't care about the people. In Arabic, have a statement. The pleasure of the people is something that is not achieved. Only focus on Allah. Focus on Allah. If you focus on Allah, you will never lose. Okay? If your love is always for your father, and we love our mother and our father, but can the whole world revolve around mother or father? What about when our parents pass away? May Allah preserve them. Your love cannot be in a spouse, because what about when the spouse passes away? Your whole love cannot be in the Ferrari, because what about when the Ferrari crashes? And now the thing is that you have to do everything for Allah. Don't put your love in a friend. Why? Because when the friend leaves, you will become destroyed in people. Even the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa didn't Allah mention the Quran? That why, that why if the Rasul passes away, the meaning of the ayah, will we just quit and you know cry and not be Muslims? No. Even if the Rasul passes away, we have to continue. And so, I'll say something beautiful. It's a beautiful hadith. Two words. Adu fahabu. Give gifts so you may love one another. So imagine, just giving gifts could make Allah happy from you. But never in the world do something for someone else. I will tell you about someone I know. He gave a gift of 200 pounds, $200. $200, dollars yeah, any 150 pounds maybe. He gave this gift to a person. Maybe his niyyah was not sincere for Allah. Not only the person didn't know that the person spent $200, 150 pounds, and for our brothers from the UAE, took the $200, yeah, any 750 dirhams Not only the friend didn't know The friend never knew this guy even gave him the gift This is what he lost If he did it for Allah Whether the friend's happy 
or depressed or the friend swears at him, Allah will never let you down. Allah is always there. So give gifts because it's rewardable. Have trust in Allah. If Ramadan Muslim means you'll be good, be a Ramadan Muslim. And then be a Dhul Hijjah Muslim. Be a Sha'ban Muslim. Be a Rajab Muslim. Be a Muslim all 12, day, 12 months. Don't let other people bully you. They are evil people. They are bullies. And by the way, if you see some religious people who may have a beard, they may wear hijab, but they bully you, remember that they don't represent all religious people. They only represent themselves. And if they have lack manners, if they lack approach, that is their problem. They are kind religious people. And religious people are, you know, beautiful. The religious people are the reason why Allah does not destroy us. Allah says that Allah does not yuhlikil qura, qura wa ahluha muslihun. Allah will not destroy the nations or the places if their people are Islamic. They're rectifiers. So the Islamic people are the ones who keep us upright. Okay, the Islamic people protect us from the fitna. They're the reasons why after Allah's mercy that Allah's anger does not come upon us. So they don't represent us themselves. They are bullies. Make dua that Allah guides them. Read Quran a lot. If you can do one juz, go for it. Two juz, go for it. Three juz, go for, go for it. I'll leave you guys with a story. There is a, in our modern times, there was a person in the UK. He saw, he was in the airport traveling. He saw a lady. He mentioned she was wearing makeup. She was wearing tight clothing. But she was reciting the Quran with proper tajweed. Now, A, she's in a British airport, not Dubai, not Saudi Arabia, not Kuwait, in the UK. Not only she's reciting Quran, but if she's wearing niqab or something, like, okay, fine, it makes sense. But it doesn't make sense. So he was just he like, listen, he went, he went to the sister. He says, I just need to know what is your story. These things are Arab. She mentions my mom died. She was in hospital. So she, mom died. Her mom was really sick. She was in hospital. And she says, Ya Allah, if, okay, if you cure my mom, a day will not pass except I'll read tenjus. And he mentioned from that day every day, she's reading tenjus. So the thing is that, you, Yani, religiosity is for everybody. So don't think, oh, I cannot. And also, some people say, I would advise one person. I said, Why don't you, you know, grow your beard? Don't shave your beard. He says, I, I watch movies, I smoke. What is this? That's like saying, oh, you know, I, I, I swear at you and I'm mean to you. I might as well, you know, beat you up too. No. Yani, dude, when you take a test, do you say, oh, I don't know this question. I don't know that question. So I'm as another test. No. Yani, getting a C is yani, better than getting a U or getting a zero. You know, so yes, is a C not equal to an A? Absolutely not. But something is better than nothing. Something is better than nothing. I want to end by use your brains. Because some people don't use their brains. Don't be bullied by bullies. And stay strong. Allah will be with you. With that said, Jazakallah khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha la ant. Astaghfirullah ka wa tubi ilayk. And now if you guys have any questions, you guys can go ahead. If it makes it easy for you guys, you guys can open the microphone and ask your question, or you guys can. Oh, oh go ahead, dot or period or full stop. You raise your hand. Go ahead. I assume you have a question. Oh, sorry, no problem, no problem. Okay, anyone else who has questions, you can open your microphone or you can put it in the chat box. Don't be shy. I don't bite. Uh, you guys can ask your questions, inshallah. Don't you worry. Yes, Jazakallah khairan, Abid. Break the awkwardness. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khair, Akhi Junaid. Hey, it doesn't seem like there's any questions. Um, Jazakallah khair for the talk today. Oh, there's a question. But I'd like to know how is Muslim looking so good. Okay. Yeah, so this is very beautiful. I want to comment on this furthermore you know some muslim mothers sisters they say oh we cannot read quran like our brothers like our fathers like our uncles mashallah our uncles our fathers they're reading quran we have to work in the kitchen for example those sisters are so blessed why because when you help in making when you 
provide iftar to a person, you get the reward of the person fasting. And we know that the reward of the person fasting it has it is greater than the reward of reading Quran. Say why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most beloved things to Allah are the things that are fard. They're the most beloved to Allah. And so imagine you are helping people in their fard. Yes? So that's a very beautiful thing. Now, to answer you specifically, you know, the thing is that I want to remind you, this is the beautiful thing about our religion. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may prevent you from doing certain actions, but you know, let's say you want to travel to go to Umrah. Or you want to go to do tarawih in the masjid, but you can't. Or you or any Muslim sister wants to pray, but due to obvious reasons, they cannot pray. Allah will give you the reward because of your intention, but you cannot do it. SubhanAllah. This is a beautiful religion. Prophet Muhammad mentioned if a Muslim does an action, but then he leaves it. Let's say I fast every Monday and Thursday. Let's say I pray in the masjid all the time. I become sick. I travel. I cannot do it. Whatever reason, Allah will give me the reward because... Okay, even though I'm not doing it Because I used to do it, now I'm stopped For a reason I cannot control, Allah will give me the reward Let's say, Abid, you want to make Umrah Any of our brothers want to make Umrah But you cannot, to be honest, actually The restrictions are easier now But let's pretend, you cannot make Umrah You get the reward for Umrah And so our sisters, A, you get the reward Of your normal Ramadans So after the issue of prayer and Quran Don't be concerned that, oh, I'm making out Quran prayer, nope, you have the same reward as your previous Ramadans And your intention, inshallah That's one point you get a good deed if you do If you have an intention to make a good action But you don't do it okay? And you have a good deed if you want to make a bad action But you don't do it SubhanAllah, how beautiful is this Now to continue more sisters, There are so many Islamic actions You know, so many Islamic actions You know, how about you learn Islamic lectures Study fiqh of wudu Study how does a Muslim make wudu You will find out you have some mistakes in your wudu For example And every, most Muslims have mistakes in wudu Learn fiqh of salah. Search fiqh of salah on YouTube. Study a playlist. Take notes. Mashallah, girls are very, uh, I'll say this honestly, girls are smarter than boys. The girls are very intelligent. You know, mashallah, I was studying Islam. I remember one time and we had an exam and the teachers praised one student. They said, this boy, he got the highest mark. He got higher than even the girls. And that, yani, <laughs> that supposedly means something. Uh, and even our teachers said, we are proud of the girls. You know, so the girls, mashallah, are very intelligent. So study Islam. Take beautiful notes, have your highlighters, have your colors, whatnot. Learn. Learn. Deen is very beautiful. So, you know, you can do that. Study fiqh of salah. Study fiqh of, you know, tahara. Study fiqh of how to fast. Search fiqh of fasting. Fiqh of siyam. Fiqh of prayer. And in fact, it's a very unfortunate problem. Some Muslims, they may do actions, but they don't know. Uh, this is, uh, I, I hate to mention this, but I'll mention this. There was uh, a sheikh in Dubai, who I know personally. Uh, okay, okay, I know. He mentioned he gave a lecture one time and he mentioned casually that a man has to make ghusl after he does what a person does with his wife. A man came to him after the lecture. He says, yeah, Shaykh, I was married for 30 years. I never knew this. Yeah, and he, all of this salah, imagine he's doing all these 30 years of salah. So we must learn. Learn fiqh of zakah. Learn fiqh of salah. Learn, we'll listen to Islamic lectures. You know, read Islamic books. You cannot touch Quran, fine. But you can touch Islamic books, read Islamic books. So, and also, but if you mean prayer and Quran, Allah will give you the reward. But learn other things. Also, girls are very good at learning, so learn. Second question. Is it true that we continue? Okay. Yes, this is a very beautiful thing. Another, this question is that, you know, is it true that if you continue doing good deeds after Ramadan as well, this is a sign our ibadah was accepted by Allah. And if we don't continue the signs, our ibadah is not accepted. It reminds me of a hadith. Prophet he was going up the mimbar. You know the mimbar? You know that the stairs, the imam, he goes up so he can give the khutbah. So Prophet says he goes up the first stair. His thing had three stairs. His podium had three stairs. He goes up the first stair, he says, Ameen. The second one, he says, Ameen. The first one says, Ameen. He gives the khutbah. Sahaba say, Ya Rasulullah, you were going up the mimbar, up the podium, and you said, Ameen, three times. Why? He says, Jibreel came to me. Okay? And he mentions, Ha. Uh, Okay, so basically, you know, imagine Allah not being uh, Allah not being merciful upon, upon the one who Ramadan comes to him, he does not change. And imagine the Prophet he says, Ameen. And he said it three times, by the way. Would the Prophet's dua get rejected? 
Imagine. So be careful. Do you want the anger of Allah to be upon you, O person who changes after Ramadan? So imagine the Prophet says, Amin. So be careful. So, yes, this is true. If you continue your good deeds after Ramadan, your Ramadan is accepted, inshallah. If you continue your better Ramadan, that's why this is a litmus test. Yani you see some people after Ramadan. That's why, yes, this is true. This is true. Don't be like those people who say, Yes, girlfriend, boyfriend, I break up with you. After Ramadan, yeah, we're back at no, wrong, zero. What, what's this? And secondly, there comes another question. How do I know if my tawbah is accepted? How do I know if Allah accepts my tawbah, my forgiveness? If you stop doing the action afterwards, this is forgiveness from Allah. If you continue doing it, and I want to add one final point. I forgot to mention the lecture. These guys who say, oh, girlfriend, I break up with you. They come back three, 30 days later. Some of these guys don't pray. I want to tell you guys honestly, the scholars mention it is better for you to not fast than to not pray. Because the one who leaves the five time prayers altogether, it is agreed upon by the Sahaba and the scholars that such a person is a non Muslim. You exit the Islam by leaving prayer. So imagine if you don't fast, you're a Muslim, but you're a very bad Muslim. Okay, you're a fasiq, you're a bad Muslim, but you're still Muslim. So you can still enter Jannah, but you may spend time in Jahannam. But if you fast, but you don't pray, like if a Christian, if I say, hey, John, hey, Philip, come fast with me. Does John and Philip get any good deeds? No, John's non-Muslim. So same thing, you get no good deeds for your fasting. You understand? So please pray five times a day. And uh, yeah, this is like the guy who does, he, he does not do his homework, will not do any essays, does not do dissertation, does not study for exams. Then at the end of the semester, he says, professor, can I have extra credit? What will extra credit benefit you? It reminds me of a statement of the poet. Uh, يعني, he mentions, Or oh, one who leaves fard, you're becoming rich by nafil, by sunnas. Wallahi, on day of judgment, your sunnas will not benefit you if you're leaving the fard. So, yes, in summary, forgive me for going extra long, Sister Minha, but there's many uh, associated topics. But yes, simply, if you're good after Ramadan, your Ramadan is accepted. And if you're not good after Ramadan, then. What are the main ibadah that we must do in Ramadan? Main ibadah, listen. Ramadan, the main ibadah is to fast. And also we know Ramadan is shahrul Qur'an. Okay, uh, Ramadan, the Qur'an came down, so you do Qur'an. Okay, Ramadan you fast because that's a month of fasting. Ramadan you pray at night because that's what we do. Ramadan, anything you can do, any other good deeds. Feed the poor people. Feed the poor people. You understand? Yani, yani, this is a coronavirus pandemic. So many poor people. If you find one of the streets, that is an amazing thing to do. Another thing you can do, for example, okay, is that you can donate to, there's so many charities, okay, in the UK, mashallah, because most of you guys are in the UK, those who are in the UAE, there are charities in the UAE, give charity, help the people in Yemen, in Pakistan, in Kashmir, in every other, you know, any other people who are experiencing poverty in Africa, in Palestine. So help. So basically, Ramadan, do any good deed you want. The main point, Allah wants from you to continue. Okay, Allah likes, okay, the, uh, the good deeds. You know what he likes? He likes the most consistent actions, even if they are little. If you, let's say some people say, Junaid, I cannot do i'tikaf. I said to some of these scholars, okay, I believe it's on the Hanbali Madhab that studying Islamic knowledge, it is more beloved to Allah than i'tikaf. Yes, sir. People say, uh, okay, what about praying in the masjid? I am a sister, I cannot pray. Uh, okay, for example, I say, do you know that the most beloved action to Allah, what's the most beloved action? Someone say, fasting, Quran, this, that. The most beloved action to Allah is learning Islamic knowledge. Read the Islamic books. I'm not even kidding, there's so many, you know, it doesn't have to be in Arabic, there's so many beautiful Islamic books in English. And a lot of them are published in the UK. This one's published in the UK. When I'm in the UK, I buy so many Islamic books in English. You know, so read Islamic books. Again, I'm telling you, okay? Imam al-Shaf, I mentioned learning Islamic knowledge. It is better than huh? all Islamic actions. Why? Because you cannot do Islamic actions if you don't have knowledge. If you never knew how to pray, how do you pray? What is the difference between, okay, yani you and the Jewish person? Or the Christian or the atheist, you have knowledge about Allah, knowledge about salah, knowledge about zakah, so you do all these actions. So learn, learn. So Ramadan is a time for all Islamic actions and a time to leave all non Islamic actions.
and do askar askar al sabah listen how to protect yourself from evil eye you can eat seven dates in the morning do askar of uh, morning and evening and askar morning you can search up on google very famous طيب طيب mentions my question is how do you try to balance islam so with worldly obligations like study i know when my iman becomes stronger i lose more kids this is my beloved teacher and older brother and my friend Abba, do you recognize them this is our teacher our older brother our friend you, you won't like me saying this even he was our pe teacher once upon a time so anyway uh, so how do you how do you do my <laughs> So how, listen, I'll tell you something. When your iman becomes stronger, he's saying is that he loses motivation for studies. Can I tell you something? I expect Allah to reward me for my studies. Okay? Abid, our friend Abid is studying finance. I hope to study law. I hope Allah to reward me for studying law. You say you're studying Sharia law, right? I say no. British law. I say, how will Allah reward you for... I say because my intention for studying law is that I will use it to fund myself so I can study more Islam. I can use it to give more yani, money. Umar al-Khattab. You know what he would do? He would do one day business, one day studying Islam. One day business. So you understand? So let your good deeds empower you to do. Think, will my parents become happy if I get good grades? Okay. So Ya Allah, if the happiness of my parents is your happiness, then Ya Allah, I will get good grades on my exams. I will study for my exams. I'll do good in my job. Ya Allah, I'll do this because it'll make my parents happy and you will become happy. Ya Salam. You know what the scholars would say? I ask Allah to reward me for my sleeping. He says, Allah, I expect him to reward me for my sleeping. He says, what? He says, because when I sleep, I only sleep so I can have energy to be, you know, praying at night to Islamic actions. I only, huh? I only eat so I have energy for more Islamic actions. So make everything a good niya. The scholars mention there's no major sin if you have tawbah and there's no small action if you have a big intention. But at the same time, a big action, you can donate $1 billion, but you're trying to show off or you're trying to have a tax refund. huh? But you can give $1 for the sake of Allah. Scholars have a discussion between scholars. Who gets more good deeds? The one who gives a million dollars, for example, or the one who has ten dollars who gives one. The one who has one dollar who gives uh, the one who has one dollar who gives ten ten dollars who gives one because it is more to him. So everything is your intention. So let your intention uh, gain make you go faster. Also, do you know that it is fard upon one person in every community to be an engineer? Sheikh Al Albani mentions. Listen, we Muslims. We need a Muslim engineer, we need a Muslim psychologist, we need a Muslim doctor, Muslim, we need a Muslim gynecologist. I don't want my wife, if I'm pregnant one day, if she's pregnant one day, to go to a male gynecologist. So, so you need female. So why Allah can reward you for that? Okay? So everything with intention. If you say, I'm becoming an engineer because I have a lot of money. Okay. I'm becoming an engineer because I want to live in a Muslim country. Muslim countries like engineers. Good. Ibadah. I'm becoming an engineer because Sheikh Al-Bani said we need one engineer in every community. Good. Everything is about the intention. How do you control your anger during Ramadan, especially while we are fasting? You know, this is the issue of psycholo psychology. It's the issue that if you keep on saying you are silly, you are silly, you are silly, you become silly. I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, you'll stay fat. People say, I'm fasting. Don't talk, I'm fasting. Hey, I'm fasting. So I think people remind themselves. No. This the issue, but also what does the Prophet say in the hadith? If you are disturbed, because it is logical that when you are fasting, you're tired anyway, and you don't like to be disturbed when you're tired. What do you say? Inni sa'im. Someone to swear at you. You are this, you are that, you are this, this. What do you tell them? In English, Yani, bro, bro, sis, brother, friend, uncle, I'm fasting. Please leave me alone. Can you please just be nice to me? Can you please let me relax? Can you? So how do you also remember this? Anger, Allah will not punish you for being angry. Allah may punish you for everything you do after being angry. Also, when you're being angry, you shout at somebody. Do you think it's halal to shout at somebody? Like, is, it, is, is that halal? Is it halal to punch someone for no reason? Think about it. Think about it. So I think that's what I said, use your brain. I said it at the end of the lecture, use your brain. If, we, if people use their brain, a lot of benefit will happen. The dot dot asks a question: How to control the desires that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala put 
and men and women during Ramadan. You know, it is very amazing. Prophet Muhammad, he says, oh, you get married. Oh, you get married. Okay. Oh, it says, yes, you mentioned, yes, my teacher mentioned a very good point. He says that the chat should be disconnected if people ask immature questions. Oh, obviously, if somebody else has a question that is uh, maybe can be phrased better, they can phrase it in a politically correct way or they can message it privately. But yes, Ustad, you're right. Send questions, yes, if there are different type of questions, you can send them privately. Now, so how to control your desires? Listen, the thing is that the Prophet says, oh youth, get married. Okay, but we can all get married. What do most people say? What do they say? Ah, mashallah, the brother, he says, what, or, or sister, what if you cannot get married? He says, Oh, youth, whoever is able, let him get married. Okay, but what if I'm not able? Okay, whoever cannot get married, let him first. It is a protection from him. Scientifically, it is proven. If you have, who has a cat or an animal like this, like a cat? You know, cats, they are neutered. Or basically, the doctors do a surgery where the cat cannot reproduce, for simple terms. Or castration. Scientifically, it is proven that the effect of fasting upon a human is that effect on an animal. It is if you have zero. Boom. Zero. Imagine. The animal who cannot reproduce, his organs are removed, the cat who is neutered, you are the exact same. Huh? Like that. So now one mentions, okay, you still get these desires in Ramadan. Think about it this way. If if somebody was watching you, would you would you act upon your desires? No. If a dog walked into your room, let's pretend. Would you still do it? No. Now Allah is watching you twenty four seven. You will not stop if Allah. But when when a dog even a dog enters your room, you'll jump. So you are more afraid of a dog than Allah, and this is reality. And I mean a physical dog, or if your cat enters the room, for example, that's one thing. Secondly, I advise people on this issue, and it's the issue of look. Allah says, من ترك شيئا لله عوضه الله خيرا منه Whoever leaves a thing for Allah, Allah will give him better than it. Secondly, Ramadan is 30 days. Control yourself. That's one thing. Secondly, make dua. Allah helps uh, everyone, okay? Secondly, look at who you, what you eat. Thirdly, if you exercise, when you exercise, it takes out your desires that Allah created in you because exercise, it uses those desires. And this is a tip brothers have used and the people have praised this tip. When you exercise, it removes your desires and you can also, your desires, you can use them for creativity. Create something. Do good work. Uh, this is all I can say. Okay, now. I think we have no more questions. But also, listen, you have to believe in Allah. We are not atheists. If you think, oh, I cannot control my desires. Are you atheist? Allah says he will help you if you are patient. Don't be atheist. Believe in Allah. Allah will help you. Have faith. Uh, now. Uh, okay, should we pay the account of Ramadan? A lot of, uh, a very beautiful question. Actually, the scholars would save their zakah for Ramadan. SubhanAllah. You're saying, should we? Should we? Is it okay? I'm saying you should. Rather, okay, okay. Scholars would save their zakah for Ramadan so that they can have more good deeds in it. So you should, and may Allah, and Allah reward you extra. And this is what scholars do. So if you do this, I give you good, glad tidings. I give you good news. You are upon the way of the scholars, inshallah. I live in non Muslim countries. I have female friends. Is this haram? Uh, y- yani, even if you live in a Muslim country, having female friends is absolutely haram. Uh, having female, f- well, uh, men having female friends is haram. Females having male friends are haram. Absolutely haram. And uh, I think the questioner, you are an evidence of this yourself. You may have feelings towards your female friends. And this gives evidence in American University, not in Dubai, not in Saudi Arabia, not in Chicago, not uh, well, I don't know. Not in Medina, not in the Islamic place, no. In an American university. And not asking Muslims. They're asking clean-shaved Johns and Abigails and Rebecca's American university campus. A guy asked, can guys and girls be friends? All the guys said no. All, maybe all except one girl said yes. Because the guys know that it doesn't make sense. Girls, because yani, they, Allah created them because Allah created girls, they will be mothers. And so they're naturally kind. And so they may overlook these things. But the guys know. So it's obviously haram. It's haram to have uh, you know uh, female friends. Is that something? Allah does not say zina is haram in the Quran. Allah doesn't. Allah doesn't. I'm playing honestly. Allah says wala taqrabu zina. Don't get close to zina. Zina is a path. Okay. Do you think people just listen? I tell you, not in the history of humanity, there has never been a person who does the zina like this. 
even if a prostitute, he will still negotiate the price. Why? How does it begin? It begins, it's, he sees her profile picture or he stares at her and then he clicks follow. Oh, it's follow. Then he likes a few pictures. And then he comments a heart emoji or cute or this or that. And then he uh, slides into DMs. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what he does. Then let's meet up at a coffee shop. I'm a coffee shop. Let's pause here. You have a university classmate. He's female. You know, okay, let's do a project. Oh, okay. Let's meet up at the library. The library's too busy. Let's meet at a coffee shop. You will eventually meet up at the house. Just like how the other situation, coffee shop, then house. One day you're in the house, or you're in the car, or you're in a hotel. And Aisha becomes Abigail. And yani, Junaid becomes John. You understand? You lose your Islam. You, you lose your Iman. Do the haram action. And don't take this from me. Anyone who does zina, this is how it does. Even the women who sell themselves to go to zina, you go and negotiate the price for It's required stepping. That's why anything that leads to zina is haram. You don't look at girls. That's why you should not look at girls. I'm not even kidding. When you look at girls, you give yourself desire. Okay, there mentions a poem, Ibn al-Qayyim. كَمْ نَظَرَةٍ فَتَكَتْ فِي قَلْبِ صَاحِبِهَا فَتَكُسْ سِيْهَامِ بِلَا قَوْسٍ وَلَا وَتَرِي Okay. وَالْعَبْدُ مَا دَامَ ذَا عِنًا يُقَلِّبُهَا فِي أَعْيُنِ الْغِيدِ مَوْقُوفًا عَلَى الْخَطَرِ يَسُرُّ مُقْلَتَهُ مَا يَضُرُّ مَهْجَتَهُ لَا مَرْحَبًا بِسُرُورٍ عَادَ بِالضَّرَرِ He mentions how many looks have killed the, the hearts. How many looks have killed your hearts? It has killed you and it has shot an arrow in you, an arrow that does not have any bow, an arrow does not have any string. And as long as you have an eye that you put into the... Uh, and you look at girls, young girls... You are putting yourself in danger. Okay? And your eye becomes happy with that which harms your heart. No thank you. And there's no goodness in happiness that comes with, with harm. And then Imam al gahtani has a powerful poem. He mentions, Verily, the men who look at women are like dogs. Like dogs who go around meat. If the meat, yani if the woman are not protected by its lions, yani her family, male family members, she will be eaten without any recompense and without any value. Think about it. Think about it. Finally, when you do sins, Allah will prevent you from having your dua accepted. It mentions in a poem, oh, let's look at the ayah of the Quran. Okay. وَمَا, okay. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسْبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Anything that, anything, huh? Any problem. Your mom shouts at you. You have a bad grade on test. You get rejected for marriage. You get slapped. You get robbed. Okay? All of that, Allah says, why? It's because of what your hands possessed, produced. It's because of what you, because of what you made mistake. And Allah forgives you for so many things. And then I mentioned the dua. We make dua to Allah in every bad situation. At the end of a bad situation, we relax, we forget Allah. Okay? How can we expect an answer to our duas? And we have clogged its path with our sins. Also, I've wrote a book and I requested Abid if I can give a lecture about this with you guys. It's called Scared of Sinning. I meant I quoted 42 bad effects in this dunya that come to you because of sins. Depression. Poverty, bad life, people disrespect you, people hate you. And you guys, I can post the PDF in the chat of my book. And yeah, let's go on, mashallah, let's ask the questions. If sending inappropriate images with my girlfriend, counting as zina. Girlfriend is haram. Girlfriend is haram. It, it, this, is, this question is like asking, يعني, it, you know, is it halal for me to buy pork with the money from my liquor store? You shouldn't be having a liquor store in the first place. Is sending, is sending haram pictures to your girlfriend counting as zina. Actually, Prophet mentions that there is different types of zina. There is zina of the hands. We can understand this. Zina of the eyes. We understand this. Zina of the feet. Zina of the feet is going to that place. Yes, salam. Scary. Very scary. Very scary. Studying our worldly things. Seeking knowledge is part of ibadah. Specifically, do for good attention. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, yani, me. Yani, if, if I study a worldly thing, 
psychology, law, finance, for the sake of Allah, Allah will reward me. But if I study Islam, I'm literally doing an Islamic action, so why not? So I don't understand the question. If you can rephrase it, that'd be lovely. Can being addicted to music lead you to Jahannam? I made a book about music. I'll put it in the uh, path. Again, I can post files, mashallah. It's very beautiful. So it will lead to Jahannam. You know, actually, Abu Huraira mentions that music brings hypocrisy in the hearts like how water grows plants and iman uh, dhikr grows iman in the heart like how water grows plants so of uh, music yani, music is very scary music is so scary it mentions one hadith that people who listen to music huh they'll be turned into donkeys and, uh, you know, pigs and monkeys. Sorry, pigs and monkeys. Look at the modern day rappers. They stick out their backsides and they, they drop their pants. Yeah, they're monkeys. Another thing about music, you know, music is equal to alcohol, isn't it? Say, huh? Since when? And the Prophet mentioned Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, they can in min ummati aqwaman yisahilun al-hirra wal-harira wal-khamra wal-ma'azif. There'll be people in my ummah. This hadith is beautiful. These people in my ummah. Not Jews, not Christian, not liberals. My ummah. So now, if you say, oh, my sheikh said music is halal. I say, Prophet, I'm spoken about your sheikh. He says, there'll be people from my ummah who listen to music. Sorry, people from my ummah who make halal. What do they make halal? They make halal, okay. Silk for, silk for men. Because men cannot wear silk. Only girls can wear silk. Silk. Alcohol, zina, and music. Why would the Prophet mention yani, music with alcohol and zina? You understand? If it was a small thing, why would he mention it at the same level? So can it lead you to Jahannam? Listen, music is not a good habit. Prophet mentions, listen, he said, I love music. I say, keep on loving music. He says, Astaghfirullah, how can you say that? I say, keep on loving music. Okay. Yani, he mentions Sahih al-Bukhari. If you love something, but you leave it for the sake of Allah, your reward is more. Ya yes, salam. Your reward is more. See, me, I don't, like, I, I don't I'm not going to say I like music. But I don't listen to music anyway. You, if you like music, maybe you get more rewards than me because maybe I don't like music anyway. But you, you understand? So also Allah mentions, Man taraka shay'an lillahi, awadahullahu khairan min. Whoever leaves a thing for sake of Allah, then you can, huh? Allah will give you better than it. Secondly, why you have, I, I don't, listen, I don't like anashid to be honest because the people who listen to too much nasheed, they stop listening to Quran. That's what I saw. But listen to nasheed, it's better than music, but not all nasheed. Some nasheed have instruments. Listen to, yani, there's Ahmed Bukhatir. Okay, there's one. Listen to who else is there? Uh, I, how should I know? Yes, Salam. Ahmed Bukhatar, there is. Yes, Salam, who is there? There's Ahmed Bukhatar. That's a, one Nasheed artist. There's another one called yeah, Muhammad Al Muqeet. You can search up that. Another Nasheed artist. Yeah, Mishari Rashid Al Affasi does Nasheed. Uh, you know, there's multiple Nasheed things you can uh, do. Yeah. So, why do you need music? But I don't like Nasheed. I prefer Quran. I like Quran. Because the one who finds pleasure from music, sorry, the one who never finds pleasure from Quran, he will never find pleasure from anything else. Okay? So, stick to Quran, and if you must, khalas, nasheed. Listen to Arabic poetry without music. Arabic poetry is so beautiful. Question. I think if you have an intention to study is worldly, mm, mm. I've heard to create my own intentions, but I notice I'm much more driven out of dunya. Listen. He says, I am much more driven to do an isla- a, a dunya action if I have a dunya intention. Think about this. If you are in a business, and I ran a business, you might fail, correct? Yes, if you fail, you lost your money. And you lost time. If you run a business for the sake of Allah, I will give uh, yani, charity. Even if you failed in your business, you are still getting good deeds. Okay? That's you're studying a degree. I want to study marketing, for example. That's you don't find a job. You still get good deeds. That's you study for, for the sake of Allah. So think... Allah will never let me down. Allah will never let me down. And you keep on reminding yourself, and it's all good. Also, I speak about yani, dunya productivity on my YouTube channel. I talk, uh, it's basically a combination between faith and productivity. It's basically my name, Junaid, then D H I Y A. You guys can check it out. So, things that just have a sincere intention. I have a productivity channel. I speak mostly about productivity on it. Why? You know, whenever I was buying a tripod the other day, I was like, hmm. But, you know, listen, I said, listen, Junaid, this tripod is for the sake of Allah. You will want this channel just for the benefit Muslims. You know? So even if it has no views, khalas, you did it for the sake of Allah. Allah will never let you down. That's why. 
I notice I grow in Islam, I cannot rely on the dunya motivation. You know, people talk about woman empowerment, and you'll see how this relates in a second. Khadija radiallahu anha was a millionaire. Yes, this was woman empowerment. Aisha radiallahu anha was a scholar. She was maybe a professor. She would teach the Sahaba. Aisha, she was a sheikha. She was a big scholar from the scholars of Sahaba. You understand? So, now why am I mentioning woman empowerment? This can benefit our sisters. But for you, that's one thing. You know, Imam Abu Hanifa, one of the students of knowledge, he's a British guy, he was studying in Medina. I heard him three years ago, what did he say? He said, my man Abu Hanifa was bawling. And it's true. You know, I'll tell you something. I, I know personally today, there's a very famous sheikh in Kuwait. I'll mention his name. Sheikh Faisal al-Hashimi. He used to live in the UK. He was a judge in the Sharia court. You know the Sharia court in the UK? He was a judge. I know him personally. He, he owns a Mercedes S500, which is like a hundred and... It, it's in pounds. It's like a... It's a 120,000 pound car. The other day I saw him recording a video. He was driving a Rolls Royce. I saw the RR on the steering wheel and I saw the spirit of ecstasy. Those who like cars, it's the woman in front of the Rolls Royce. He was just driving. He was talking about... I called the sheikh. I said, sheikh, mashallah. I said, did you rent the Rolls Royce or you bought it? He said, how do you know I have Rolls Royce? I said, I saw you. He said, how do you see me? I said, I saw the RR. He said, this is my car. So yani the sheikh, he has, a, he, has a, he has a Rolls Royce. He has, why? It's halal. He was recording a video. Is it halal? To, is it permissible to, if you are, if you are traveling in this Jum'ah, can you miss Jum'ah? And if you're flying one day, it is permissible. You know? And he was in that first class. He was a business class suite, I could tell. The thing is that he's a sheikh and he's enjoying his life. Right, so what's the issue? So I would say, yani, you can combine between deen and dunya. Imam Abu Hanifa was a millionaire. Abu Bakr Siddiq, rich person. The Sahaba were millionaires. So you can combine. You can combine. You can combine. So, yes. How can we avoid ghibah? Just as... Hmm. How can you avoid backbiting? Let's talk about Ramadan. In Ramadan, you are avoiding food and drink. But you want to eat the dead flesh of your brothers and sisters who are Muslim? In Ramadan, you avoid food and drink, but you want to huh, eat the dead flesh of your brothers and sisters. Secondly, listen. It's not sexism. This is the Hadith of Salam. And it's true. Let's be fair. It is true. We all know this. He mentions he thought that most of the people in Jahannam were women. And they had scraping their faces, maybe, with copper nails. Why? Two reasons. Let's focus on... Backbiting. So think about it. I'll me, guys. I'm not. You know, I cannot imagine sinning. Why? I, I I put my book in the PDF. Whenever you sin, Allah will punish you. Allah will destroy you. Allah will make you. Allah will make you depressed because of sinning. Allah will give you anxiety because of sinning. Allah will makes someone might punch your face because you sin. Sinning causes problems. So riba is another sinning. What's the difference between riba and girlfriend and alcohol? Just riba is the easiest. Secondly, stay away from the people who do ghibah. Why? Because if, huh? If Maryam can tell you about the mistakes of Aisha, why can't Maryam tell Aisha about the mistakes of you? But I hope there's no, I, no, there's no Maryams and Aisha. Mashallah, good. I don't need to offend anyone. The same thing. If someone can backbite about someone else, ghibah about someone else to you, why can they tell you to them? It's a good point. So that's why that's another point. Thirdly, it is a very big sin. Imagine, if I listen to music, I ask forgiveness from Allah. And Allah will forgive me. If I back, why I ask for forgiveness from the one who I backbitten. Really scary. And also, a good practical advice, you know, never be friends with someone who does ghibah. Me, my friends don't do ghibah. Or, if let's pretend they do. My friends are Islamic people, so I don't think they do. But if they do, they won't do it in front of me. Because, you know, I'm an Islamic person. And there's one or two people. They're not my friends. But I heard them do ghibah. I said, please, stop. I, I cannot do this. Please, this is, you know. So it's like that. A very beautiful question. Thank you so much. Please highlight about 15th Sha'ban as people fast on that day and call it shab i barat. So, يعني, how about you show this people, show them the complete list of all these sahaba who fasted, uh, who, sorry, who fasted on Ibarat, 15th Sa'ban, show them the whole list of Sahaba and the four Imams who did extra prayer on Shabibarat. The list has zero people. No Sahaba, 
passed it on this Shab'i Ibarat, 15 Sha'ban. There's no Abu Hanifa did not, Imam Malik did not, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed. We don't have this. So that is the detail. So the detail is, for example, I mean, in Islam, let's say you tell me, Junaid, why you have phone? I say, what's the problem? He said, give me evidence phone is halal. I say, no. In dunya, everything is halal until you can prove it haram. So until you prove me this is haram, my phone is halal. But in deen, it's the opposite. Let's say you start praying five rak'ahs or you start dancing in your prayer. I say, no, you are not allowed to dance in your prayer until you give me a hadith. And so same thing, يعني, these people, they should not be doing shab ibarat. What is the evidence? They'll bring you some random books. You say, listen, I respect your books. But I am commended to obey the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So bring me an authentic hadith. Don't bring me fadail a'mal. Don't bring me a random book. Bring me Sahih al-Bukhari. Bring me Sunan Abu Dawood. Bring me a Sahih hadith. So there's no Sahih hadith. So it's that simple. How do you deal with those people? Advise. Advise with kindness. Have a nice smile. Advise with good words. And if they don't, the uh, Prophet says, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawidat al hasan. Call to the path of your Lord with wisdom. And to come your word with a good example. That's what you see if a guy, if he has a beard and he dresses like me, or see a sister, she's wearing naqab, and if she's very tough, she does not represent Islam. Because Islam is da'wah with kindness, da'wah with a good example, as the Quran said, da'wah with wisdom. So you give wisdom, oh, there's no evidence. There's no evidence. You know? Also, can't these people who do this 15th Sha'ban, can't they just convert all of their energy and save that for like the 27th Ramadan or something? That'd be much more productive for them. Manam, the beautiful question. Thank you. What is the way to recite Quran during prayer for saying Taraweeh at home? So, yeah, it depends. And I want to tell you guys one thing. I have a video. It I called it not on my YouTube channel. I sent it to some people I know. I called it "Read Surah Al Falaq" or no, "Read Surah Al Nas" in every rakah. What was my video? My video was after Ramadan. It was brothers and sisters. And now, brother, now we're not in Ramadan. So do this now. I said, please pray night prayer. Night prayer is not only for moms. It's not only for sheikh people. No, night prayer is for everyone. And even, I'll tell you, it is permissible for you to read Surah Al-Falaq in the, all the night prayer. It is permissible, yes. Keep on repeating Surah Read Surah Al-Falaq, Surah al You just same Surah. And in fact, I'll tell you something. It is permissible even, you guys say, I never heard this before. I said, study your religion. You'll find this out. Even in your night prayer, let's say you only recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Only Fatiha, then Allahu Akbar. This is also permissible. And so I say it is better for you to do night prayer with only Fatiha, or only Fatiha and Falaq, than you do zero night prayer. So pray night prayer. So what's the instructions? I mean, you can always do Falaq, you can do Nas, you can repeat them. But have variety. If you, I think most of you guys have memorized the 30th of Juz. Repeat those Surahs. Let's say, okay, I haven't memorized anything. No problem. Read Quran. Read while you're praying. Now question. What do I do? I'm done with my Quran. What do I do? So the scholars mentioned it simple. Have a you know, have a, a chair next to you when you're praying, and then Allahu Akbar before you just put it down. Simple question is it halal for me to lead if I'm reading doing tawih? Can I read from my phone? It is permissible, but two things. A it's better you shouldn't, you know, phone so distracting, but it is permissible. But you should a you should mute it, uh, not mute, it's called you know, uh, do not disturb, airplane mode, all of these things. But the best way is a mushaf. So you have a mushaf, or you have your phone, and then you put it down maybe, or okay, then Allahu Akbar. This is how we read. Okay, how now you say, Shah, I say, so now I mentioned the thing. I request from the person whose mic is open if they can turn off. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you in both worlds. So, hi, it's now question. Do you read the Quran out loudly when you're praying by yourself? Night prayer. You should, you know, in fact, why you read by yourself? Bring your family, bring your sisters, bring your mothers, you know? So, yeah. Please highlight on waratil al Qur'an tartila. Yani, this, this ayah we learn, you should read the Quran in a beautiful voice. But, ha, huh, don't make it soothing. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's not music. We have tajweed. We have rules. So read the Quran in a beautiful voice. Now, yani, if someone can read, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Permissible. But Allah wants you to. What is the Quran? Recite the Quran with tartil. 
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah wants you to have in a good voice. This is also you should have tajweed. That, that is what is said about what al Quran taught you. So we see the say Quran a good voice. Say Quran. You know what I'm saying? I saw a video of uh, two Christians trying to read the Bible. They're trying to read the Bible. I'm not joking. They're trying to read the Bible in like some singing voice. You know, Allah has made us a Quran where we have rules how to pronounce, how to stretch. Uh, med, tajweed. It's a beautiful book. And our brother Abid Muhammad, half of Quran, mashallah, I'll tell you more about that. So this is this is what the Quran is the beautiful questions, beautiful questions. You guys can continue, my friends. Okay, I'll let you guys type. For those who are typing, if they have a question. Abid, you turn on your uh, Yanni cam, you automatically thought Yanni it's done, huh? <laughs> huh. <laughs> it seemed like there was no more questions, so I was I just opened my I camera mean, again. It, it, it seemed like that many times though. Mashallah, they're, they're very good questions, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Some of them were okay. Really good brother, questions. I want to tell you something. I'm not a grammar police, not in English or in Arabic, but I want to benefit you guys. Do not say Jazakallah. Jazakallah means may Allah give you a recompense, a return. So you can say, may Allah give you a recompense of bad. I don't want that. Say, Jazakallahu khayran, may Allah give you a recompense of good. Yes. Uh, no, Shaykh, just Junaid. Just say, wa'iyaki, wa'iyaki. Wa'iyaki, thank you so much. Or the... uh, before I end, I want to add uh, the two files in the chat. I want to add the Scared of Sinning book, and then I want to add the music book, if you don't mind. So anyway, in the first book, it's small, just 20 pages. I mentioned 42 dunya effects of, you know, that sins have upon you. And you'd say, dunya effects? i say, yeah, of course. Sins have an effect on dunya. Like, what does and how? Okay, if I have any Islamic questions, how, how are I able to contact you? I will put my, you know, means of contact. I will type them in the chat of them as soon as I'm able to access the chat again. It's not showing me the chat because I'm trying to upload the file. But I'll definitely put the links to contact or the means. Okay, this is the Scared of Sinning book. Any dua for increasing love between spouses? I want to advise you, be careful. And you may see, read Surah Al-Baqarah a hundred times this ayah and put it upon the food. And the... Listen, uh, love is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Allah, He is the one who put between you Love, okay. He put between you the mercy. Allah does it. So this is all from Allah. Ask Allah's tawfiq. You know, uh, he was called by a sister. She says, you know, my husband and I, we have issues. He said the lady didn't end up praying. So he says, yani, you think that you're complaining about issues and you don't pray? Obviously, yani, if you don't pray, you will have issues and everything and your finances and your this and your that. Right? So that's how it is. Uh, so how you make dua? Make listen, Allah, this religion is so beautiful. Just say, Ya Allah, increase love between my husband and I, and do good deeds because if you do bad deeds, Allah will punish you. Allah will punish you. Uh, and in fact, you know, uh, Allah is punishing you in this life. You know, that's actually a from the mercy of Allah is that He punishes you in this life. You say, What? I say, From the mercy of Allah, punishes you in this life. You say, How does that make sense? I say, Allah could punish you in the next life, but He chose to punish you in this life. There is a person, He did zina. He did zina so many times. He says every weekend he's doing zina. He spoke to a shaykh. 
you mentioned then after maybe he reaches 30. So imagine the years of young, so maybe 12 years of zina every weekend. 30, he wants to get married. He is, he is not able to have children. Boom, zero. There's a difference between deficiency and zero. He is zero. So Allah is blessing him. Allah could punish him in next life, maybe. That's how Allah punishes him. So this is even a mercy from Allah. And uh, so, yeah, so make dua, Ya Allah, put love between us. You know, have wisdom. Don't uh, don't get angry easily. Don't shout. Make dua. And stay away from sins. Sins are a very uh, powerful thing. And I posted the two books in the chat. Now I'll post my links so you guys can contact if necessary. And yes. I want advice for everybody. I put my Instagram. I personally was requested to make Instagram for three years. Maybe even Abd, you requested me once upon a time. I was refusing for years until speaking to this Sheikh in Kuwait who has the Rolls Royce. And he says, uh, you speak English? So you have to give da'wah in English. So I said, okay. So I said, if a scholar advises me, I have to khalas. So otherwise, uh, yeah. But even then, I personally don't prefer Instagram only because the Sheikh said so. Otherwise, if you don't need Instagram, best not to use it. But yeah, that's that. That's all my contact information. There you guys go. Seems like there's nothing else. You know, I have a funny thing. I, I thought I was going to tell you, man, I only need, you know, I only need 20 minutes. I don't know how I'm going to spend the rest of the time. So sorry? You were telling me, Junaid, it has to be a long lecture this time. I was thinking, you know, yeah. I only take 20 minutes, you know, and it took 20 minutes. But oh well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. See, it's all for barakah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, um, they, they had a lot of questions as well, and no. like they were really, they were really good, beneficial questions. So, I think, no. alhamdulillah, the questions are good. In fact, there was a there's a sheikh who a famous sheikh in Europe. He was in a restaurant with a Christian man, and the Christian man said, "Hey, listen, you say everything's in your Quran, right?" He says, "Yeah." He says, "Okay." And they're in a restaurant. He says. Where is the recipe of this salad in the Quran? Where's the recipe of this salad? He says, he says in the Quran. He says, where? And there's an ayah in the Quran where Allah says, ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. And this is about Islam, but it also applies about finance, psychology. And so he asked the person of the restaurant. He says, see, so the, the recipe was in the Quran. You know? So anyway, asking questions is a very beautiful thing, you know? So asking questions is the ibadah, inshallah. May Allah reward other people. Yeah, Allah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. You seem too excited to end. People, people are asking, mashallah. If you make this a hotline, 24 hour hotline, where Janet Bai just stays on the whole time. But Abid, as we say in Arabic, khayru baraka, you know, it's good and baraka. Actually, the baraka, means, uh, baraka means beneficial knowledge. Prophet said in the Quran, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ Allah made me blessed wherever I am. The tafsir is Allah made me a teacher of goodness wherever I am. So this is barakah, this is beneficial knowledge. Do I listen to that? Do we need to recite Allahumma? Okay. Okay. So actually, do I listen, you know, they're actually different narrations. But this is actually obligatory. You have to mention. So, okay. So you see, have to, sorry, sorry. It's not obligatory. Forgive me. I'm confused. It's uh, fatiha, obligatory. So du'a, this is sunnah. This is sunnah, you don't have to do it. And there was a famous scholar, Imam Ibn al Jawzi. He mentions he would enter prayer. Maybe the Imam will go to Sami Allah to make, but so he will go to Rukur. And he says, My Shaykh would advise me, listen, the Imam from, yeah, he's like six, 700 years ago. He mentioned, listen, you will mention, the, you will mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Sunnah, but you will not mention Fatiha, which is Fard. So, yes, this is Sunnah, but do it. Why not? It's easy. 
what do you think of going to a non-Muslim country for citizenships if you are Indian or another Kafir country? Okay, Abid, I'm going to put you in a difficult spot. But listen, Abid, you won't like me saying this, but I'm going to say this. Uh, this is coming from a brother of ours, okay, an Indian living in the UAE. Listen, our friend Abid, you're Indian, but you study in the UK, and your university fees are like $20,000 a year. So and you must be living a good life too. So not every Indian is poor, you know. Even uh, I had my, my brother had a classmate. He was uh, half Indian, half uh, Pakistani, you know. And I came back from Asr one day. There's a Bentley in front of my house because my father, brothers came. And then I think I was talking to the boy, that's your Bentley. He said, no, it's not mine. That's my brother's Bentley. Mine's a different one. I thought, oh, oh, you know. <laughs> so, and then I mentioned, so you have one driver? He said, I have three. And of course, you know, what if one's busy? And of course. So the thing is that not every Indian and Pakistani is poor. But, you know, uh, listen, listen, I would advise don't go to the West for citizenship. Study in the UK. Study in a good university in the UK. Like Abid. Uh, Abid, you'll stay an Indian citizen, I think. But Abid, mashallah, see, he's studying at Durham University, one of the best universities in the world, you know? So Abid is studying there, you know? So, and, and he's Indian and he'll come back to UAE. And so and just go study in a nice university and study a nice degree. Don't study any basket weaving studies or something. Huh? Study engineering, do law, do, engin do engineering, law, engineering, law, what's engineering, law, computer science. Ewa. Or as uh, Kevin O'Leary says, the three, there's three best uh, careers if you want money. Engineering, engineering, engineering. So yeah, become a doctor, engineer, or computer scientist, man. So yeah. While performing wudu, do I need to wipe my neck? This is what I was thinking about when I said study fiqh of wudu. This is a very common bid'ah to wipe on the neck. That's why I said to use to our sisters who, yani, uh, who want to study Islam or even our brothers, learn fiqh of wudu. Because you'll realize this is not from this one now. And if you want to know which, where should I study from, you can message me through the means I mentioned and I can send you a playlist on YouTube or something so you guys can study inshallah and take notes. So, yes. Also, Ma'ad, you know, on, on, the list, on, the, on the list of richest people in UAE, there's a few Indians. I hope you know that. So, you just get good education. Good education is very important. You know? As, uh, what's his name? Uh, Steve Harvey mentions, first is God, then, then family, then education, then business. So, yeah. So, wiping wudu, it is bid wiping your neck. This is bid'ah. Do not do this. Ma'abad. <clears throat> <clears throat> Honest, honest, I was about to ask you, do you have Aisha coming up? But Aisha is done for you. Aisha <laughs> is done. It's just done. Our Aisha is um, at 7.40 something, I believe. Yeah, 7.44. Yeah, man. So, you know, I, I, when I'm in the UK, man, Aisha, 11 p.m., Fajr, 2 a.m. Those days, I should just stay in UAE, you know? <laughs> I, I, I will do that. Yeah, I, mean, I will do that. When I'm in the UK during that time, you know, that's may Allah reward you. I've never been in the UK at that at that time. Uh, when 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 uh, Isha is that late and Fajr that early, so I never experienced it. So inshallah, it'll be an experience to experience that. La la la. Yeah. Is... How important suhoor is? Beautiful question. Uh, suhoor, yani Prophet Muhammad says. Have suhoor. Because there's blessings in suhoor. There's nothing's in suhoor. Imagine, the yani, Prophet is telling you to have suhoor. Would you reject the Prophet's advice? No. Secondly, what did Prophet say? That the mercy of Allah is upon al mutasahirin the people who have suhoor. Allah will have mercy upon you for having suhoor. Allah will have mercy. So imagine, you, imagine you get good deeds for eating food. I mean, that does <laughs> But I mean, that's one thing. Secondly, it helps you. How will you listen? People say, "Oh, I have exams." If you don't have suhoor, obviously, you know, how will you exam if you have <laughs> no food, no water? No, that's not how. It Drink your water. Have food. Have day, you know? But, you know, have uh, slow released carbs. You know, have oatmeal. Uh, be careful of cereal and sugary things. 
cereal and sugary things, they have a lot of sugar. And so you'll get a sugar crash. It will go up and boom, you'll crash. You'll feel tired. You have your caffeine. Uh, yani after, uh, during, uh, after so full time, I would have an espresso. So I'm awake for Fajr and I'm awake so I can read my Quran. I would read my Quran uh, after Surah uh, Yes, after Fajr. So yeah, I'll do this. So Surah is very important logically because how are you going to ex- live a whole day without food? Secondly, listen, you, Allah will give you good deeds. Allah will have mercy upon you. We all need Allah's mercy, so why not? That's how important food is. La la, Ahmed, Ahmed, why are you so con- oh, are you, I see, you're so excited to welcome me and introduce me, and you seem so excited to. Uh, no, 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 I'll tell you honestly, you know, yeah, I, I would, uh, I hate you, me. I was thinking, I said, listen, let me make, let me make 20 minute lecture, I don't want to disturb them. Because I said, listen, if the people want me, I'll stay. If they don't want me, I'll go. Yeah. Hey, Annie. So I don't annoy anyone. So if they have questions, I'll stay, Annie. Yeah, true. For sure. 100%. 100%. I, I agree with that. Totally. But, Annie, if I don't get invited to a lecture again, maybe I understand why, huh? <laughs> <laughs> In real life, I need to give a lecture at Durham University. Juma'a khutbah, inshallah. Inshallah. But aren't you guys like eight hours away from London? I was like, okay, that's too much, man. It's a four hour train. London. Four hour train. Anyway. Give or take. What's the sunnah of iftar? Should we eat first or pray Maghrib? You should break your iftar. Okay. And then you should just just have a date and then go. People, they have two things. Uh, Abid, what's it called? No, oh, yes, yes. One is iftar, one is dinner. What is this? Yani, and I didn't know what's the difference. I said, yani, iftar is dinner for fasting people. But I went to someone else. Iftar, yani, dates plus samosas, plus pakoras, plus yani, the red drink. Uh, yani, uh, and then this is iftar. And then dinner is, yeah, this, this, you, you should eat. Why? Because when you, and this is a fact, when you eat the pakoras and this and that, you'll be thinking about, the, you'll think, be thinking about the dinner or your extra food after salah. And you're saying, so it's not nice. You know, I, I, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, any, when fasting would happen, because in Dubai, in Maghrib is always, sorry, the Maghrib iqam is always four minutes after the adhan. So whenever I hear the adhan, I would just take a date, eat it, and I would walk to the masjid. Salah. So yeah, this is, so the, you should just eat one date, break the fast, because huh, it is sunnah to break your fast as soon as possible. So eat your date, drink your water. But, ah, that, that, that comes a question. The famous uh, people, they, they eat the date first, and then they, they, they make the dua, then they eat the date wrong. You eat the food, then you make the dua. Okay? Because the dua, if you look at the meaning, it means... Okay, okay, that, oh, the veins are wet and whatnot. How would that happen if you didn't break your fast? So eat your date, drink your water, and then make the dua. Finally, I want to mention another a nice point. People, they have, it's very common. And I wanted to mention this in my lecture. It completely exited my mind. May Allah bless you, eight people who are staying. You guys have this good information. Spread this to your friends, because I really wish I mentioned this. I really wish I mentioned this. In a typical Ramadan dinner, how is it? Or iftar, how is it? Father, mother, family member. Everyone has their hands up to dua, right? Why? They say, oh, iftar is a time of acceptance. I think, yes, one hadith mentions iftar is a time of acceptance. But the whole day of a fasting person is a time of acceptance. So dhuhr time, make dua. After make dua, always make dua if you're fasting. So it's not only end of fast. How important is it to uh, Yes, Jazakal Khairan for your kind comment. Uh, I would love to give a lecture with you guys. How important is it to pray Fajr in the Masjid? Well, Fajr in the Masjid, yani, you are from a special group of people because you have per- chosen to exit your bed, your warm, cozy bed, 
in order to stand in the lines of the slaves of Allah. So it's a virtue, you know. Secondly, there's an opinion of some scholars that praying salah in the masjid is fard anyway. So there's a benefit from that. But let's say you don't take that opinion. All prayers in the masjid are still 27 times more the rewards. So why would I just have my one fajr prayer when I can have times 27? That's one thing. Secondly, Prophet Muhammad whoever prays Isha and Fajr in the masjid, they get the reward of praying all night. But you said, oh, I can do that anyway in Ramadan, right? The one who prays with the Imam till he leaves also got the same Allah. I said, listen, Ramadan is one month. The Allah, the 11 months, what do you do? So say, pray Isha in the masjid, pray Fajr in the masjid, you get the reward of praying the whole night. So there's another hadith, by the way, benefit for you guys who are staying, the last 10 people. The one who reads 100 ayat at night, you get the reward of praying the whole night as well. So yeah, may Allah bless you guys who are staying. So that's the important of praying. Also, Fajr, it purifies you. It purifies you. Because how many people have big biceps? They can lift hundreds of kg, but they're not strong enough to lift up the blanket at the time of Fajr. So you're from a special group of people. Also, you don't think that the mercy of Allah is coming upon the people who are praying in the masjid? Also, it pures your heart. There was a person who was sinning, and somebody advised them pray Fajr in the masjid for two weeks. So I pray Fajr in the masjid. After two weeks, his heart was purified after years of sinning. So that's why I mentioned it is very easy to get your heart dirty. It is very easy to clean your heart. Sorry. That's right. It is very difficult to get your heart, di heart dirty, but it's very easy to clean it. What do we do if about the fast we never kept for years? You have to calculate, you know, how many fasts you missed because fasting is obligatory upon people who are pubescent. So calculate how many Ramadans you've missed since you've been pubescent and make them up. And you say, oh, but that's yeah, any, how many hundred? I say, hey, you, yeah, any, relax. There are mothers who have had five children, three children, seven children. They have like hundreds of days fast. Yeah, and may Allah reward them. Yeah, and may Allah bless me. May Allah, I thank Allah I'm not a mother. You know, that, Imagine having hundreds of extra fasts outside of them. It's, you know, it's... So, yeah, it's a lot. But anyway, mothers do it, so you can do it too. So just like how those mothers will tally. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One person I knew, they had a calendar. They would X every day they fasted. So they have the amount of days left. So you just make it up. So, yeah. Also, you seek refuge from Allah. I don't know why you're missing fast for no reason. Unless you have an excuse, but I don't know if you have an excuse for missing for many years. Just may Allah forgive you. Allah is merciful. So just uh, make them up. Yeah. Are our children an amana? You know, children is a big thing. Can I tell you a small thing that is amana? You know, nowadays we have a habit. You, you want to tell a secret to somebody, you say, say, Wallahi, you won't tell anybody. Promise you won't tell anybody. Umar al-Khattab says, even if a person wants to tell you something, even if he just looks back, whatever he tells you is an amana. He does not have to say, Wallahi, or anything. So that's an amana. But that's for children. Yeah, and he does, of course, the big amana. A big amana because yeah, imagine you raise a bad child, you treat him bad manners, you can get so many bad deeds you can't even imagine. Imagine father smokes and his son learns to smoke, and then his son learns to smoke. And I don't think cigarettes are going anywhere, rather, more drugs are coming if you guys focus on society. So, imagine a whole lineage of people will smoke, and it's all due to this father. Mother will not wear hijab, or she will wear hijab showing some of her hair. And then her daughter learns that, and then her daughter, and a whole lineage of women, of girls, are wearing wrong hijab because of them. But at the same time, scholars mention women are a madrasa. Women are a school themselves. Because if a woman, if she makes a few good children, these good children, one will be a good 
يعني, engineer who will raise the name of Muslims. One will be a famous scholar. Another one will, be, will give a lot of charity. Another one, the Majadatid scholars say, a woman is a madrasa. She herself is a school. A woman is a university. A woman is a college herself. You understand? So children are definitely an amana. Also children are an investment. You know, people say sadaqa jariya, sadaqa jariya. They focus always on sadaqa jariya of this country and that. That's good. The Prophet, what did he mention? He mentioned two sadaqa jariyas we forget. Good knowledge you taught and a righteous child who you left. Your child, he's an investment or she's an investment. You have to focus on her, spend time with her. And then how does this investment pay you back? When you are in the grave, the child will make dua for you. Okay? Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. His name is mentioned every day, maybe. And what do people say, rahimahullah? May Allah have mercy upon him. So you see, this is... So imagine his mom, Imam Bukhari was originally blind. His mom made so much dua for him. He became unblind. And imagine, because of him becoming, after Allah's help, after him becoming unblind, he became this big scholar. So imagine all of this good deeds of him becoming this big lantern of Islam, this light of Islam. It goes back to his mother, inshallah. And you're know, behind every successful man is a successful woman, yani his mother. So children are a big amana. Children are a big amana. Yeah. And that's why we have to take care of your children when they're young. Because it will become too late. And then when they're older, they will not listen to you. And then what can you do? You will complain to a sheikh. But what can sheikh do? You have to focus on... You have to plant the, the plants when they are small. Not when they are dead. When they're dead, they're dead. Khalas. But if, if you guys have some more important thing to do at the moment, like pray, definitely prayer is more important. Allah mentions us that we have to pray at our time. And that's why I'm, I'm always afraid, you know. I always pray in the masjid, but let's say I'm in a situation where I don't pray in the masjid, for example, right? I like to pray as soon as possible because I'm scared that if I die, I would, I would meet Allah and I did not pray the prayer. So definitely if you guys, if any of you do not pray, please make sure to go do that. But if not, you're welcome to stay. If you have questions, obviously. So, Abid, you said something? Uh, no, 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 no. I was talking to my brother. Give him my salam. I never met your brother. He says, "Why can't you know?" Is he also some finance graduate from some big university in the UK? No. <laughs> I'm just joking. He studies in middle sex. Mashallah, good. <laughs> no, no, like... no, 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 middle sex is good. Yani. They have a branch in like Dubai, UK, and like Mauritius or something. Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good university. Why not? But he's a finance guy as well. He's much better than me in education. He does all my assignments for me. Yes, so. salam. You shouldn't say stuff like this. <laughs> Ah, but yeah. But we can teach the sunnah of drinking water. We know the sunnah is three sips. But people say, "I want to finish my water bottle. How do I have three sips?" I say, "You. This is from sunnah of drinking water. You can take, take a, you can take a breath. We have to breathe outside the vessel." Prophet said, "We should not breathe inside the container." And then you can take a sip. And you can do it in sets of three. And this way you enjoy the water more. It is more healthy. You feel more content. Do I continue my, my second third step? I got you. Mm -hmm. Yes, mashallah, yani you're, you're enjoying it. Like, gung, 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 what those people do. Yani it's, like, yani people that can finish like half a water bottle in like one minute. Uh, one minute in a few seconds. That's me at budget time. I'll be honest. And you need? I have a question for you. Probably. Are you ready? Yeah, what should I say? 
I'm ready, inshallah, خلاص. Okay. And uh, my question is about Zamzam water. تفضل. Zamzam water. Do the normal rules of drinking water apply to Zamzam water? Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. This is the common bid'ah that you stand up and drink Zamzam water and you face the yeah. This, okay, so people, you say, why you stand up and drink Zamzam water? You say, oh, because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up. I say, what is, what, what is the situation of the hadith? They, did, they just did Umrah. They just sl- sl- slaughtered their, so this is the Hajj. They slaughtered their animals. There's blood all over the floor. So he cannot sit down anyway. And so his only option is to stand. So that's why you, so, so yes, zim zim water, <laughs> sit down, drink it, no issue. As for any special thing, yes, the scholar, the Hadith of Salaam mentions, zim zim water is for what it is drank for. Let's say you want good grades on your exams. You can drink zim zim water. I'll tell you, me, myself. Okay, there are some scholars, they, they're drinking zim zim water, their niya is, huh? their niya is to have a good memory. Niya to have knowledge. You can drink some some water. You want good grades on your exams. Some some water. You want to get married. You want rizq. You want money. Then the water is for whatever it is drank for, as the Prophet Muhammad says in the Hadith. But don't lose that opportunity. Never lose that opportunity. Success is where preparation meets opportunity. How does that relate to our conversation, my friend? I have no idea. It just popped into my head. Okay, I officially think there's no more questions. I officially think so. It's been eight minutes and there's no questions. So I officially think so. If we get a question right now, that'd be so funny. Allah. That would actually be funny. I'm not gonna lie. That would be hilarious. Okay. But then, but then, but then you'd answer the question and then we'd wait for another eight minutes having a conversation of our own. But as they say, going once, going twice, going twice. Alaikum salam, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha la anta sakhra katu bilak. Wa salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, Abid, you want to you want to kick me out? What's this? I'll, I'll see I'll see you I'll see you on WhatsApp. Yes, I'm messaging on WhatsApp. Yes. Or we can wait till they leave, and you can tell me why you are so keen. Khalas, Abid, salam alaikum. Let's see you on WhatsApp. Why am I so keen?